E G G Egregious Games. Hello, hello there. It's been a while. Uh, I actually recorded this as a stream yesterday, but then forgot to click the record button. Uh, but that's fine. There was actually a few things that I wanted to mention, but I forgot to because I, it was a stream unscripted. Uh, today it's still unscripted, but let's see if we can remember uh, what we're talking about today. Uh, just about the channel briefly. I haven't uploaded much at all in the past six months or so. Um, that's basically by design. I've been knuckling down on the game I'm making in Unity Frontier. But I do still want to make content for this channel in some way, shape, or form. I still want to talk about games. That's what we do here. Uh, so what I might be doing is uh, a few less uh, edited videos and a few more just unscripted ones like this. In any case, I, I, I've had so much stuff to say, but you know how it is. You know, you want to make a good video. You want to make a video essay about it. And then you just end up never doing it because you've got other things to prioritize, like working on a game, which, as it turns out, takes a lot of your time. Anyway, the thing I wanted to talk about today is uh, game reviews and who gets to make game reviews. More specifically, we're looking at Steam reviews and just... Overall, I think Steam reviews are a pretty shitty quality. Like you don't, you don't go to Steam to get deep, insightful reviews. You go to this t the top reviews of any game, and it'll uh, tend to be like a meme, or it'll, it'll just be like, "Oh, this is bad because like it didn't work on my machine," which isn't you know really um, an in-depth review. But is it still valid? Um, and there is an argument to be said that it is. And I'm going to examine this closer, in closer detail um, by looking at an example. Because I, I was watching um, a discussion in a Discord the other day between two people. The first person was essentially making this point that bad reviews are bad. Why, like, some reviews are so bad that it's essentially to the point of, like, The Witness. This is the example they were using. The Witness is a puzzle game and there's people leaving reviews to the extent of uh, I don't like puzzles so this game is bad. Dende's going nuts in the background at spring. Um, anyway, there, there was a second counterpoint made um, was a, a little bit devil's advocate in my opinion and the counterpoint was to the effect of well you can have someone who says a game is frustrating and leave it at that. And then you can have someone who says a game is frustrating and they'll give a 50,000 review as to why. They'll put it into more detail. And these tend to be like the video essayists, the, uh, you know, pe people who actually write reviews for a living. Um, and they might go into more depth and say, well, it was frustrating because the enemy design was bad. There were unfair things that couldn't be countered by the player and you end up bashing your head against the wall or maybe they felt like the map design was confusing um things to this effect and then there'll be a person who just comes along and says well no the game is frustrating and the point this person was making is that it's basically the same opinion between those two people but one is just enunciating it better so is the lower quality review less valid just because they can't enunciate their viewpoint as well just because they can't explain their views oh god my fucking den look at this crazy bastard it's spring and he looks like he's on drugs look at his eyes so back to my point um <laughs> yeah so th there's kind of a point to examine here um which is some people just aren't as good at enunciating their opinion, but their opinions can still be valid. Um, a lot of people complained about the bugs in Cyberpunk and they didn't do so well in a lot of cases. It was just like bad, bad, bad. They, they didn't counterpoint that, but there's still a truth to that feeling and there's still a value to be gained. Like we don't go to Steam to get insightful reviews as we say we, we we want to just get a feeling of the general public but here's my add-on to that um because i think 
there is a value in good reviews and I think there is such a thing as good and bad reviews and as I hinted at before I do think this is kind of a devil's advocate argument ultimately just because an opinion is valid just because a review you know you're allowed to make that you're allowed to have your opinion does that make the review good does it make it worthwhile no no it doesn't and I wanted to talk specifically about what makes a review good. What makes a review worthwhile? And, um... I think we can go back to the witness example, right? If someone says, I don't like this game because I don't like puzzles, that's not helpful, and it's just illogical, right? I think the most important thing you have to do is be logical about your points of view. So let, let's take Dark Souls, because um, this is an interesting one. A lot of people find the game frustrating, and that's a real experience. If you find the game frustrating and you don't enjoy it, that's valid, right? But how do we analyze that? Because if you just say a game is frustrating, again, that's, that's simplified, that's not helpful. But if you say, um, well, first, let, let's talk about what, what makes a review good and what makes a review bad. I think what makes a review good is when you give the whys. You explain why a game is bad, because then it can be helpful, even if the person disagrees with you. For instance, if a game tells you for instance, if a game doesn't tell you what to do and where to go and your frustration with the game is saying it didn't tell me where to go, I felt directionless, then someone like me might read that and go, oh, well, I actually don't like being told where to go and what to do. I like it when the player isn't given too much information and you get to figure it out for yourself. So even though that person has told me that it's frustrating, now that I understand why, I understand that the game might not be frustrating for me. So I'll read more reviews and I'll see if I can find a review from someone who uh, has the same perspective as me and might um, be able to uh, tell me if it's something I would enjoy. It's definitely something that's a lot more helpful than just saying it's frustrating. Another thing about good reviews is that you'll break it down a bit. So you might talk in more specific examples. Um, you might talk about enemy design. You might talk about um, difficulty. You might talk about the kinds of people who would enjoy the game and the kinds of people who would. Because ultimately, that's what a review is about. That's what a review should be before because not everyone needs to play every game um not let's let's be real though we try to give games some kind of numerical ranking really these days with so many games on the market it should be more about um what kind of games do you like what kind of experience are you looking for and what kind of people are going to enjoy this kind of experience so if you take a game like hollow knight that's going to really appeal to people who want um, a difficult, non-linear experience. If you look at the game Cyberpunk 2077, um, this is an interesting one to talk about right now because this recently won the Labor of Love Award on Steam. And there's a strong argument to be made that it really doesn't deserve that. Um, but that's kind of a product of, of, of Steam reviews, right? If you get a game that's played by a million people and only like 10% of them think the game is worth that award, um, it's still going to be a game that half of the people who played it thought, wow, this is a labor of love. But that was only like 100,000 people compared to a million. Cyberpunk is still going to win. And, and so it brings up this question of just quantity over quality in reviews. And what's more important, um, the, the quantity of just good or bad, or the qualitative, like, is this good? So to take Cyberpunk as another example, I think this game, the, the action portion is 
good. It's like serviceable um, at a certain point, but but it's not like tight. It's not built to be purely an action game. It's an action RPG. Um, and so if I'm recommending that to someone and they say, well, I, I really just like action games. I really just like shooting experiences. Then I might say, well, why not just play Doom? There's, there's plenty of other games that are more tailored to the kind of experience you're looking for. Whereas if someone said, oh, I like RPGs, um, I'm into character customization, um, and I want a deep personal story, I can go, well, that depends on the kind of experience you're looking for. Again, do you just like to be told a story? Because if so, you'll probably like Cyberpunk. Uh, if you like to customize a character, th there's a lot about Cyberpunk that you'll like. But the customization is a little lacking. And specifically when it comes to choices in the story, if, you, if you'd like to feel like you have agency and your game is different from everyone else's, maybe try a different game. Um, there, are, there are plenty of other games, Disco, Elysium, Pillars of Eternity, that can give you, give you a better, pure RPG experience when it comes to choices and feeling like you're inserting a character into the world. That's qualitative, right? That's a qualitative review as opposed to just, ah, that's shit, or, ah, that's great. No, you, you need to play it. That, you know, even if I say I like Cyberpunk and you don't like Cyberpunk, um, then that's still helpful to you as a player, right? So yeah, I want to go back to a point about um, what makes a review quality. Because it's not just about being able to relate to other people, which is important. Um, there are some reviews that are, in my opinion, just objectively bad. Um, and I want to go back to the witness example. So if you just say the witness has puzzles and I hate puzzles, therefore I don't like this game, the game is objectively bad, that's a shit review. Because that's just illogical. We need to think about logic when we're analyzing game design. And I, I want to talk about Dark Souls in this example. If you, if you talk about Dark Souls, a lot of people will tell you the game is frustrating, but satisfying. Or it's just frustrating. And that opinion varies from person to person, right? A lot of people will just say it's a bad game. Some people will say it's the best game of all time. So how do you tell if it's a good game for you? Well, you read a good review. And someone who says it's frustrating, they might say, I like it when I feel like it's challenging, but fair. And I've played a lot of challenging games, but Dark Souls will do things like have enemies pop out and there was no way I could have known the enemy was there. So it's just frustrating, right? <laughs> I had no way to know, so it wasn't a fair challenge. And that's kind of halfway there, right? That's halfway to being a good review, a good opinion, because they're starting to explain why they didn't like it. And that sounds reasonable enough, right? But we need to look at game design um, and what were the intentions of this game. So in the case of Dark Souls, Dark Souls is actually intentionally trying to create this unfair experience, this unfair atmosphere. And the reason for that is it's giving this experience, the intended experience, that the world doesn't care about the player. In a lot of modern games, it feels like, you know, it's, it's trying to create all these fair experiences. The enemies, oh, they're not going to do anything. They're not going to heal themselves. They're not going to drink Estus flasks because that would be unfair. Only the player gets to do that. Well, Dark Souls doesn't give a shit about the player. And even though it does have balance, it's hidden behind this intention to give a feel that the game doesn't give a shit about you. It will put unfair enemies at the start of the game. It won't tell you that these are unfair enemies. You're going to have to go and fight them and find out. And you might lose souls. You might lose progress. And that might be frustrating for a lot of people. But it was intentional, right? And we can look at that. Look at their feedback and say, well, if everyone dislikes this, then maybe you've got a case that this is just bad. But what we found out with Dark Souls, as, as niche as an experience as we all thought this was going to be, as unpopular as logic should tell us this game would be, a lot of people found it, a lot of people liked it, and a lot of people lauded the game design. 
So we can't say that's objectively bad. And I think the same goes for a lot of different game designs. We need to look at the intention. What was the intention? Because that changes everything. If you're trying to create a relaxing experience, then Dark Souls fails at that. If the intentions are in conflict with the reality of the game, then we can say that's a mistake, that's bad, right? That's, that's a more qualitative review, which is not to say that unintentional things are always bad just because something's unintentional. Often unintentional features in games can end up being really fun. Um, I'm, I'm sure like, for, for instance, Street Fighter, uh, combo breaking, um, a lot of, um, uh, what's, what's the word I'm looking for? Animation cancelling was originally unintended, but it turned out to be fun. Now, because that's an unintended effect, does that make the game bad? No. But we, we have to talk about that, right? We have to address the fact that something was intentional or not. And if you don't enjoy an experience because of an intention that just conflicts with the kind of game that you like to play, then I think you should include that in your review, right? Say, I didn't enjoy this, it didn't work for me, but it was intentional, and here's the kind of people who might enjoy this experience, right? So let's, let's bring it back around um, to the topic. Who gets to make Steam reviews? Or who, who gets to make game reviews? And I think the answer is everyone gets to make reviews. We all get to have our opinion. But that doesn't mean that those opinions are all equally valid. That doesn't mean reviews can't be shit. And I think it's important to talk about the quality of reviews and the quality of critique. You know, everything in this world needs to be critiqued. Uh, I think it's absolutely essential. When you, you come to science, uh, you get peer reviews. Um, you get people critiquing the critique of other people, right? You get to any article that's talking about anything. And I, I love, whenever I read an article and I think, hmm, this is a little bit sus. Like, I, I think there's some logic here that doesn't actually line up. What I always do, I love to go down to the comments. Because at the top of the comments, you will find someone who has already picked this apart and has talked about, well, th this is where you went wrong in this review. You didn't talk about this. When you talked about the music, you said it was banging. But what kind of music? Is it gothic? Is it boppy? Is it a, is it a platformer? Um, does it suit the game? And, and so I think we do need to talk about um, the validity of criticism. Um, does the criticism actually make sense? Does it respect the intentions of game design? Does it explain who would enjoy the game as opposed to just whether the game is good or bad? And uh, th this is why I've always advocated I think Steam should at least have a neutral rating. Um, but I, I think... Steam is currently using the kind of social media model of reviews and so um, it, it's got to be simple and easy it just wants people to give feedback on games it doesn't matter and I don't think the Steam review section is ever going to become a place you go to get quality reviews chances are these days if you want to find a quality review of something you go to YouTube um, but anyway that's my little spiel that's my little bit uh, again, I did a stream of this yesterday, but it, uh, it just didn't get recorded. So I thought I'd just re-record it today in a little more detail with those facets. Um, about the channel, uh, again, I haven't really done much in the last six months. What I might be doing is a few more of these because um, I've been focusing pretty much exclusively all my time and energy on the game I'm making, Frontier. And I would like to show some of what I'm doing, but right now I've really got nothing to show. There, there is nothing worth showing. Maybe by the end of the year, um, it would be nice to maybe do some devlogs, but I'm just not there yet. But I'd still like to talk about games. I still have opinions to share. And even though I don't have the time to put together more edited videos, video essays, which is, you know, what I really like to do, thought, you know, I've still got opinions. Why don't I just do a few unscripted videos like this um, just to, to promote some nice discussion. Also, um, 
I have just made a Discord channel. Um, for the channel right now, it's small. It's mostly friends. I want to keep it small. I want to keep it a, a nice place. Um, not a, a shitty meme hellhole for edgy memes. Um, so I, I'm going to tentatively drop a link to that in the description if you're interested in that, talking about games, having some discussion about game design and stuff like that. Um, do feel free to join. Other than that, I will say thank you for watching this video. Hope you have a lovely rest of your day and uh, you know, just, uh, have a good one.